One of the key features that sets Polyboard apart is the way it handles complex geometries in your cabinet projects. Because it's parametric, you can very quickly define irregular angles and slopes, and Polyboard instantly creates the design. It's ideal for working with sloping ceilings and walls and unusual room layouts. In this example, we'll show you how easy it is to build these kinds of projects in Polyboard. We'll start a new cabinet using the free shape option. I'll select a manufacturing method I created earlier that includes some hardware and other construction details I'd like to add. The dimensions I'd like are already in place, so I'll now click on the edit button and we open Polyboard's shape editor. You can use this to draw any shape by double clicking on the shape to add points then drag them into position across the grid. For precise positioning, you can also use the coordinate system. However, in our example, we want to show you how to import a shape already drawn in a CAD program. Click on the X to erase the design, then on the Import DXF button, and select the file we want. It will open in a pop-up window. Make sure the polyline is highlighted and click OK to import. The shape is now shown in the editor. To generate a workable model, Polyboard requires us to define each face, in this case a front and sides. Select the front side and define it as the frontage type. Now to select all sides at once, we'll click and drag across all points and by holding down the control button, deselect the front. Now we will define all the other faces as sides and finally give all those sides a slope of minus 10 degrees. Click on OK. The cabinet now appears in the new cabinet window. Click OK again and our cabinet is generated. Firstly, we'll define the shape of the top using the multi-slope top option. Click on the corresponding icon in the toolbar and you will see a new window with a visual preview of the cabinet with a relevant panel in blue that we're going to edit. Select Profile 2 to work on the depth of the cabinet. With a double click, add one point on the axis and we want to position it at an X value of 420 millimeters. Select the left segment and raise it by 50 millimeters using the grid points. Add a second point and move that back down. Then set the X value to 570. You can see the result in the visual window. Click on OK to apply it. Now we'll select the cabinet inner zone and position an upright at 500 millimeters from the left side. Then click on the right volume and position a second upright at 445 from the left side. We'll now add three free divisions on the left with an angle of five degrees along the width and minus seven in depth. We'll apply that, then select the middle panel and change the width angle to minus five degrees in the properties window. Now on the right side, let's add a double back with a distance of zero from the front. In the middle, add a nil shelf at 160 from the top In the lower volume that's created, add a double back at 350 from the front, and in this volume, we'll add a built-in door and three fixed shelves. In the upper volume, we'll add a built-in drawer with a length of 500 millimeters. Let's take a look at the 3D result and open the doors and the drawer. Back to the 2D window now, we'll insert divisions into the drawer. Select the drawer volume and add a double back at 350 from the front. In the new volume, add a double back proportionally at 50%. This volume has now been divided into two equal parts. In the first part, we will now add three uprights and in the second part, two. Let's take a look at the result in 3D again. To finish off our design, we'll create the cutout on the top to create a window to view the drawer content. Select top one in the properties menu and click on the edit structure button. Select the inner tooling and a rectangular tooling shape with a height of 350 and a width of 420 millimeters. Set the X position to 125. Add a second rectangular tooling, a little larger, so 360 in height and 430 in width. Again, set the X value to 125 and also add a 2 mm slack value. For the depth, set the value to 13 mm. This will create the rebate and play for the glass. 
add a third rectangular tooling with the same dimensions. Set the X value to 125 and remove the 2mm play. Also adjust the depth here to 5mm. Click OK to apply. Select inner tooling 2 and change the nil value to no and change the material to the ZZ glass 008. Select in the tooling 3 and change the nil value to no. Click on the structure edit and we are going to select this predefined assembly that I added to my manufacturing method and click on OK. This has now created the frame to secure the glass. I hope this video has shown you the ease of use and flexibility with which polyboard handles complex shapes and designs. And as usual, all the parts are available instantly in the cut list, part by part drawings, and CNC files. Thank you very much for watching.